So, okay, so, so before I start, oh, I, should, I should say, um, so, so this is work with Robert Haraway. Oh. Rob Meyerhoff. Nathaniel Thurston. And Andrew Yarmoa, who's Andrew's sitting right there, so you should get to know Andrew. So, so I, I should say that as a disclaimer, that uh, that that a lot of this this project involves, uh, well, computer rigorous computer assisted proofs and. Uh, and it's it's still sort of in in progress, uh, just just the rigorization procedures. Actually, we think you know we know what's 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 needed, but there's there's certain things that still need to be done, and and certain other um, well, just verification that um, that well, there's a lot of experimental evidence for, but it still it still needs to be done. So so you, sh you should view. Um, you know what I'm saying is, as uh, perhaps as a work in progress, and uh, if I state something as a as a theorem, there's the disclaimer that's subject to, well, certain cl cleaning up, and well, you know, just this the rigorous verification. So, um, right. So, so so to start with. Say n is uh, it's going to be a hyperbolic three manifold. So so hyperbolic means that it has a metric of constant minus one curvature, and it's usually going to be complete and finite volume. So we'll be working in in well hyperbolic. Three space the upper half plane, so so that's well set of points x y z where z is z is is positive and 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 the metric is is equal to the well Euclidean metric well Euclidean metric scaled by Sort of, uh, well, one over one over z. So, and and our, our manifold is, is 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 well is H three modulo gamma, where gamma is some group contained in the isometries of H three, which is. Free, acts, which acts freely, properly, discontinuously, and um, well, right. So, uh, so they, these are the objects of study. Now, so, so we're, we're well, we're going to be studying cusps of hyperbolic three manifolds. So, so it's a, a fact that if if n is is, is complete. And uh, finite volume, then then topologically each end is is of the form torus cross half open interval. So so if you want just a very schematic picture, so so here's uh, here's sort of this three manifold. Say it has one end in this picture and 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 this this part over here is uh, say say one one infinity. So just topologically, it just has a nice you know product structure. Now metrically, it, it looks like well well okay. So so you look at the points x y z. 
such that, say, z is bigger than or equal to 1. So, so think of, in, in 3 space, everything just lying above and including height 1. So, 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 so there's that. And OK, well, I'm drawing, I've drawn you the plane. And if you take the plane and just mod out by z plus z, you get the torus. So if you just take, take this, this, this whole thing and, and just mod out by, um, by, by, by uh, z plus z, well, this is torus cross half open interval. And uh, that, this thing over here, this is, this is, this is our, our cusp. Now, uh, well, we have a group here, and, and the group, of course, at, in universal cover, acts on, 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 on these different regions. And so, so if, you, if, if this thing is cutting off a cusp, then what's the image of this under a group element? Well, it's, it turns out to be you know, well, something, something like this, where here's, here's sort of the xy plane. And, 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 you, and the image of this under some transformation is, is going to be some, some ball, which is tangent to the xy plane. So, Chris, in the upper half space model, I mean, the interior of hyperbolic space is, is topologically just open three ball, and the boundary is a two sphere. And in the upper half space model, the two sphere is xy plane plus a point at infinity. And so, so for, for this, this, this horror sphere, this, the, in, the universal cover of the cusp, well, the, it's tangent infinity. But when you apply transformation, it's, it's going to be tangent at, at some point in the xy plane. And, and so, so you can see this whole infinite collection of, of pairwise dis, dis, disjoint balls that are, uh, that are tangent at, at infinity. So, right. So, so this, this is a, a cusp. Now, we can, well, just a little remark. You could see that, that, that this, this torus over here is just a Euclidean torus modulo z plus z. So this has a nice Euclidean structure, and which is just gets scaled as, as you go towards infinity. Now, you could just as well can take this thing, I mean, the z plus z is just acting everywhere, so you just, just go down and uh, just, just, just take this, this plane and move it down lower and lower, move this, this torus down. Of course, when you do that, it, it takes these balls and, and they get bigger and bigger. So, excuse me, so, so there's some, some point where, where when you bring this thing down and these things g grow, that there's going to be a, a first point of tangency. So, um, right, so, so you can expand horror balls to sort of a first point of tangency. And I'm not going to draw this here, but this, this thing's getting bigger and bigger. And, and at some point, it, 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 it becomes tangent to itself. So right. So actually, well, if, if you haven't seen this before, it's, it's sort of, you should just try to think, just spend some time, really worth it, to think about what this, this looks like. But in particular, it's worth doing sort of this exercise that the question is, what's the volume of this thing? And so here's a little fact that the volume of, of the cusp is, is equal to uh, 1 half of the area of, of sort of the boundary torus. So, so if you can compute the area of this Euclidean torus, well, it turns out to be 
half of what this three-dimensional volume of, of that cusp is. So, um, right, so you expand this thing and until you can't expand any further, that's sort of a uniquely defined object, and, and the result is something, is something maximal, so that's called a maximal cusp. Right. So, so here's, here's the question, sort of an open-ended question, which is, so what are all the um, hyperbolic three manifolds well with a low volume maximum maximal cusp so you define your idea of low and what are all the manifolds with, which have a maximal cusp of volume below that amount. So I should say all manifolds are, in this lecture, are, everything's orientable. So Okay, so here's the theorem, which is that uh, let n be complete hyperbolic three manifold, and uh, with cusp with maximal cusp with a maximal cusp of a volume less than or equal to 2.62, then, then n is obtained by filling 1 of, well, maybe at least one of, well, 22 sort of explicit, explicit um, two or three cusp three manifolds. So in other words, uh, suppose you fix this number, 2.62, and then, then there's 22 manifolds, which have two or, th well, actually 21 of them have two cusps, and one of them has three cusps. And, and if you look at one of those manifolds, just one of those manifolds as, say, as, as these multiple cusps, and, right, the cusp is it's just topologically torus across the interval. So you, just, you just can compactify it by just putting a torus at infinity and then just filling in with a solid torus. So, so the operation of just, just compactifying cusp, filling in a, a solid torus, that's called Dane filling. And uh, uh, so, so the claim is that, that all the manifolds with a, big cu a small cusp can be obtained by filling one of, of 22 particular manifolds. So let me say a few words about why you might find this interesting. So, so here's some applications. So, 
So to start with, you could applications to the study of non-hyperbolic Dane surgery. So, so the, the fact is we start with the hyperbolic manifold with, with some cusp, maybe one, two, whatever, and, and you could do surgery on the cusp, Dane surgery, like I just described. And you know, one of uh, you know, Bill Thurston's great theorems is that for all but finally many surgeries, the result you get is hyperbolic. But the question is, well, what about the non-hyperbolic surgeries? What's the st structure? What can you say about them? And uh, so, so in particular, I mean, well, Bill Thurston studied fillings of of the figure eight knot complement, and and he showed that for the well, he, he studied that explicitly and. And he showed that uh, there's exactly 10 non-hyperbolic fillings. And that was slightly more than 40 years ago. So, uh, but, there's, but since then, there's been this just, just tremendous effort to understand the non-hyperbolic fillings, particularly how many and how far apart they are and things like that. So, so here's... Well, okay, this last piece is done by this guy, Tom Crawford, who's a student of Rob Meyerhoff. And, and that is that the figure eight knot, figure, figure eight knot complement. Is, is the unique, well, hyperbolic manifold with, uh, with at most, well, with, a, with, a, with, uh, with 10 or more uh, non-hyperbolic fillings. Well, on some cusp. And right, so right, so actually this, let me just say just in words, this this thing has a like a, a long history that, well, as I mentioned, just, just the finiteness it was was sort of this foundational theorem of 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 Bill Thurston and uh, well there's a theorem of, of Gromov and Thurston's, t this uh, two pi filling theorem, which is that if you, if, you, if you look at a manifold and you look at, say, the maximal cusp and you, and you look at a curve, and if the length of that curve with respect to the, uh, the Euclidean metric is at least two pi, then, then if you do filling along that curve, you'll get a, a a manifold with a metric of, of, uh, of strictly negative curvature. And, well, and, and, well thanks to, to Perlman, you know, such a manifold is, of course, hyperbolic. And, well, this 2 pi was subsequently improved independently by Egel and uh, Ian Egel and Mark Lackenby. And, and then, uh, well, uh, well, there was sort of this long technical paper by uh, Rob Meyerhoff and Mark Lackenby, which, which showed that this, this number, in fact, was, was, sort of the, was sort of a maximal number. And uh, so, so now that, that we know that, that we know all the, in some sense, all the manifolds that, that give sort of smallish cusps, and if you have a big cusp, well, just at the in level of intuition, you can imagine that if you have like a really big cusp, there's really not too many directions that will produce 
sort of curves of length six or higher. And so somehow between these, these two facts, there's sort of a, you know, cl a clean, uh, well, a, a proof of this theorem. And so here's sort of another application to non hyperbolic Dane surgery. Yes? Um, is it possible that the Dane surgery is also a secondary method? Because it showed that the maximum number of regular nodes uh, led to the cell. Yes? So I think so because, well, I mean, the figure 8 knot has 10. So, so this is an upper bound and, or sorry, uh, a lower, sorry, it's an upper bound, but on the other hand, it's realized by the figure eight knot. And, um, and, and the point of this is that, that in fact, it's, it's only the figure eight knot. So, so, so another measure of uh, sort of non hyperbolic surgeries, well, here one measure is just the number. The other measure is something called distance. So if you, ha if you, do, if you do one filling, well, that's determined by sort of one surgery curve. And if you do a different filling, that's a different surgery curve. And you could calculate the, uh, the geometric intersection number. And that's the, the distance. And you could ask, well, what's sort of the maximal distance between, uh, between curves? And for example, in this one, the distance is 8, I believe. And so, uh, so, so, so we could answer a question of Ian Agle. So, Which is, uh, well, um, well, what are all uh, the hyperbolic three manifolds with, well, cusp of volume, say, less than or equal to two and four sevenths? Well, two and four sevenths is less than. 2.6, which is less than or equal to 2.62. In fact, it's less than 2.62. So it's within our world. So, um, so therefore, we could give an answer to, well, Agel's question. And, and the reason why he asked this is because this is a number such that, um, well, he, well, well, um, well, if well, if if n has has fillings r one and r two of distance, say bigger than equal to seven, then uh, then the then the area of the cusp is is less than, say, 2.2 and 4 sevenths. So, so therefore, if someone analyzes these 22 manifolds, then it shouldn't be impossible then to nail down the, the fillings of, which have distance 7. And, uh, and apparent, I guess it's known that there's three examples of dis distance, manifolds with distance 7 or more uh, fillings. OK, so one application is to non hyperbolic Dane surgery. And uh, second is to volumes of hyperbolic three manifolds. So right, so, um, so the smallest volume manifold, well, that's the Weeks manifold. The Weeks manifold, and I guess uh, Rob Meyerhoff and Peter Milley and I showed this in 2007, and and that was sort of the culmination of you know a huge amount of work, uh, you know, including uh, work of well Egil Dunfield that used. Uh, Perlman to reduce it to understanding fillings of, of one cusp manifolds of volume 2.848 and lower and, uh, and, and 
uh, well, uh, Prez, Andrew Prezworski and Rob Meyerhoff and um, Gehring and Martin, a whole bunch of things sort of went into the proof of this theorem. But now that we have sort of this big cusp, we can, uh, well, we, we, we know what the, well, we know a few more actually, uh, w w the, well, actually, so, so now we know the, well, so sort of one cusp manifolds of a volume like less than or equal to 3.07. And using that, now we can prove that, that the, sec the second smallest is, is the manifold, well, the second smallest in snappy census, which is sometimes called the Meyerhoff manifold. And we can pr prove that the third smallest volume manifold is the manifold known as vol3. I, I should say that, that you know, we, we called vol3 vol3 about 20 years ago or so. And it will actually come up in a, in a, in a, in a bit. And, and, and I was, people harshly criticized us because we were calling vol3 something that may or may not be vol3, but now it really is, so I'm very happy, actually. And so here's sort of another thing, which is that, uh, that the minimal maximal cusp, well, that's, uh, that's realized exactly by the figure eight knot and its sister manifold. So there's exactly two manifolds with a minimal size maximal cusp and its area, so their volume is equal to two root three, which is approximately 1.73. And and well, here's a fourth thing, which is sort of, just call it cusp. I'm not sure, cusp geometry, cusp, uh, well, variation of cusp volume. And, and that is that, uh, that there exist, say, two cusp manifolds. such that a volume of, of cusp 1 goes up, so if under, under filling, well, under some fillings of, of the other, and, and, and also for the whitehead manifold, uh, the, the volume sort of strictly decreases. While filling sort of the other cusp. So, uh, so unlike, I mean, volume, which strictly goes down under filling, I mean, by, by example, there's two cusp manifolds, so that when you fill one cusp, the volume of the other cusp can actually increase. On the other hand, whoops, so other hand, so for for the whitehead, for the whitehead link, it, it turns out that, that if you fill one, the other cusp gets smaller. So anyway, so here's well, some reasons why you might find you know some applications to um,
So I'd like to give you some hints as to the idea of the proof. So if you fix a number like 2.62, you might ask yourself, what, I mean, the question is, what are all the manifolds with a maximal cusp of 2.62 or less? So, 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 if you, so the thing is, if you just start with one manifold and a cusp, well, you can, you can go to, well, another manifold. Let's call it, I don't know, M prime. So where... Uh, which is of a very special type. So maybe I'll just draw the picture. So here, here, here's, here's your cusp. And, and here's, well, there's another horrible that, that's sort of preventing this cusp from getting bigger. Well, actually, and, and here's the, the, the parallelogram. So for the fun, fundamental domain. Well, actually, there's another ball by Colin Adams observed that there's actually two they come in pairs. But in any case, um, here is, so here's our parallelogram, and, and here's this other ball. Now, the point is that, remember, the, the volume is half the area. And, and so, so, so a, a, a manifold with a smallish cusp will have a bounded area parallelogram. So if you, if you call this, this translation distance m and this, this one n, then this parallelogram has area bounded by 5.24. So uh, on the other hand, you could look at the, the group, which takes this, this ball at infinity to this ball. So, uh, so there's this g, which takes, so g, if this is the h infinity ball, g of h infinity. Is, is, is this ball, say, B, say it's based at zero. So if you look at the group generated by M, N, and G, well, that's, that's a group which has the property that it's, it sort of captures, it has the property that has the same exact maximal cusp, and it's sort of the, the minimal subgroup with, with that property. So maybe just call it N of M, N, G. And so it, it, it turns out the collection of M, N, and G's, the, the possible collection is, is, uh, is parametrized by a compact, sort of a, a, like a cube, a, a compact ball. Well, it's, it's so, sorry, M, N, G's uh, in, in, inside a, uh, a real, well, a real six-dimensional uh, compact parameter space. Well, that is almost obvious because there's like one, well, one dimension for M, two possibilities for N. Well, uh, this, this point comes from some point in the in the parallelogram, so there's two more dimensions, and then there's sort of a, a rot rotation. And well, uh, co compactness is almost immediate. So, so let's call this parameter space space P. So what we need to do is understand, study this parameter space. So, so here's sort of a schematic picture. So, so here's, here's, here's our P. And, and inside this P, we can, well, in this particular case, there's about 85 sort of uh, sub varieties. 85 varieties. And so, what are these varieties? These are, sort of solutions to some word 
in M N G is equal to the identity, which is an element of S L to C. So you can think of M, N, and G individually as given by matrices, and you, can, and you have some word, and you multiply them all together, and you get the identity. And so we can find sort of these 85 varieties. And well, to oversimplify something which is just, well, really fantastic is that you have this space, which you can think of as some cube, where you can chop that cube up into tiny little cubes. And so, so given a point in the parameter space, you find some tiny cube that, that contains that point. And, uh, and that corresponds to some, some word. And, well, and you could ask, well, what does that word, say, do to, to this ball over here? Well, it takes that ball somewhere. But if it takes that ball and, it, and that ball sort of crashes into the ball at infinity, or it's the ball at infinity, but you know, the, 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 this, this point is, well, it's not some translate of that one. Well, that's, that's, a, that's a parameter which is distinctly not realizable in this context. And by sort of continuity, if that point's not realizable, then nearby points aren't realizable. So, so in that way, these are such a word is called a killer word. Now, and that sort of kills some neighborhood of this, this point. Now, on the other hand, you might have like a point here. Now, this, this point is satisfied by that variety. And well, uh, well it, it's satisfied by that, um, that equation. So that co might correspond, that word might correspond to a relator in the group generated by M, N, and G. Or, um, but on the other hand, that group might not be dis discrete. But in any case, it lies in the variety. And that, that's sort of happy. You're happy. But maybe there's a point extremely close to the variety. Well, uh, it's, in some sense, it's too close. Th this word is too close to the identity for, for the computer to say, well, it really isn't the identity. It really isn't not the identity. So, uh, but there's this shimizo lootbacher theorem that, that says that if you have a group generated by, say, a, a, a standard parabolic, say, 1, 1, 0, 1, and you have another group element and given by a matrix, and uh, then if well, one coordinate is, is particularly small, well then the, the, the group you get is not discrete. So, uh, so application of that and some other thing says that, that in fact that's able to sort of say that if you're near a variety but, but not on it, then, then you're sort of, uh, then you're not one of our sort of relevant points. So anyway, so the bottom line is, and this is, believe me, this is, involves incredibly uh, deep understanding of, of sort of the situation involved and very clever and very efficient arguments to, to get this all to function. And uh, so, so, so anyway, to summarize, we have our parameter space. We have 85 varieties where all the potential points arise. Yes? Where do you get 85? Well, that's sort of the, what sort of came out of this analysis. So um, you, know, you put the computer to work, be incredibly clever. You find a word that, that works. OK, that's one variety. And then there's some little space of the parameter set. And you need to kill. Oh, the cusp volume appears in this parameter space. It, it bounds the size of this, this parallelogram. So, so the, the, the volume, uh, you know, impose, bigger volume, bigger parameter space. So, so you have some, some region which, which, so you have to, so very clever, somehow you find another word. And, 
And that another word sort of corresponds to another variety. And so, um, so ultimately, we're able to take this thing and, and so that, to cover the entire space so that you know, these varieties, together with you know, these sort of uh, uh, you know, these, these little neighborhoods, together with these killer words that kill stuff outside, we can cover the entire parameter space. So it just seems like it took 85 varieties to deal with this. So let me just say in words that uh, before I continue and we talk about analysis of the parameter space, that, that, that this, this, this theorem about, uh, well, uh, understanding manifolds with low cusp volume can be thought of as so the cusp version, you know, just a generalization, of the cusp version of so the log three over two theorem that was, uh, well, well maybe we just should state very quickly. So, which is that, uh, well, which was done by myself with Rob Meyerhoff and Nathaniel Thurston, and and then there was. Uh, in 2007, Chumper, Renker, Lewis, Lipiansky, Meltzer, uh, along with uh, uh, Alan Reed, and with, you know, on, well, these guys under the supervision of Walter Neumann, these guys were undergraduates at Columbia. And, uh, and then uh, with Maria Turnkova. So the ultimate theorem is, is that, um, that if n is, is closed, hyperbolic, and uh, then either n is equal to vol 3, or, or there exists a log 3 over 2 uh, embedded tube. About about a closed geodesic. So, so this theorem, we can somehow control the geometry around some, some closed geodesic. Either you have a, some explicit manifold, vol 3, or there's uh, a, some reasonably thick tube about a closed geodesic. And so the parameter space argument was, 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 was done here and, and, and showed that any exceptional thing appeared in like one of seven little boxes. And, and these guys showed that there's only one manifold in each box. And, uh, but there's the issue of, remember, that, that a parameter space pulls out a particular subgroup. So this guy is a covering space of this. And so to find all the manifolds, you have to need to find, understand all the covering spaces. And, uh, so there was three problematic covering spaces, which was, which was sort of sorted out there. And it turned out that there was sort of no covers. Now, on the other hand, there's, so, right. So back to the present, about cusps, there's a remarkable theorem of Ian Agol in 2010, which is that if n, has, has a maximal cusp of a volume less than pi, then, then the index, then, then this, this group, well, uh, pi 1 of, of, the, of, of the manifold, you know, with this, well, this, this subgroup, G, M, N, M, N, G, is, is sort of finite index. In, in the fundamental group of n. So, right, so if a cusp is, is kind of small, that when you just pass to this, 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 this thing which captures the cusp, it's, it's automatically a, a finite sheeted cover. And, and actually, what we prove 
is, uh, is this is actually, uh, well, index 1. So it's the whole group if, um, well, if the volume of the cusp is less than 2.62. So in all our cases, there's, there's no non-trivial covers. Now you might think that's, you know, you see that here, here well, in the case of exceptional manifolds and, and here, but, but the fact is that we discovered that if you look at M135 and M138, the, the corresponding cover is of index 2. And there, the cusp volume is 2.828. So, right. So, okay. So that so that deals with, you know. So th so therefore, you really just need to understand this parameter space, because because in the in the in the, in the volume at hand, these are, are the same object. So. Right. Okay. So now there's the question of understanding the varieties. Okay. Now here, this. Um, well, okay, so, so the variety, so so let me just sort of what seems to be just going completely different, which is sort of the knot theory of of horror balls. So so if you just so just ignoring everything I said to this moment, you could just think of this. So here's a horror ball. Well, here's another one, another one, and. You just, just you go around a nice sort of pattern of tangent horror balls. And, well, just, well, whatever, this, th these balls are, this, this, this necklace, call this thing a necklace, this is certainly unknotted. However, you could very well have knotted horror balls. You could very well have have like a sequence of, of a necklace, which is just a, a sequence, a finite sequence of balls, one tangent to the next, where all the interiors are, are disjoint. And it's, 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 it's you, just, you just can do it. It's, you know, you can just, because the fact is, if here's a horror ball and here's a horror ball, you could just find a bunch of horror balls that, that go underneath. So, so, so crossing changes are not a problem. So, so this is so this is the idea of being knotted. Well, it's actually a little bit more complicated than, than this looks because there are knotted horror balls, there are knotted necklaces that are not knotted. By which I mean, if you just look at sort of the you know the connecting you know all these centers through here, that's that's some curve in hyperbolic space in R3, and we know what it means to be knotted. But you could easily have sort of a, a, a curve, such a curve which is knotted. Nevertheless, these balls don't bound a disk. Because cause, cause remember, a hard ball, you know, if you just look in cross section, you, know, you see there's, there's this little spot underneath. But there's these points at tangency. So these, these, these balls have like a little frame. They're, they're, they're touching infinity at various spots. So these points at infinity sort of keep disks from what might potentially be an unknotting disk from, from really being a, a disk. So, right, so there's the idea of being knotted. There's the idea of being linked. So, um, well, well, actually, already this. Uh, so you could have like just a you know a, a standard sequence of 
of, of six balls and, and like one in the center. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So if you look at one through six, that, that's sort of very nice and, and, and unknotted. But if you look at, let's say, this one, A, well, it's called, this, well, A, so A union, say, H infinity. So if these are all, say, balls at height one, then if you just throw in these, these two balls, then, then, the, then these balls are knotted, but they're, but they're, not, un, but they're not unlinked from, from the union of A and infinity. They, they, those are blocking. Actually, I should say that, well, they didn't, well, they didn't study knottedness. Um, uh, Colin Adams and Karen Knudsen studied this blocking phenomena. So, I, unfortunately, I don't have much time. So, okay, so, so there's the idea of knotted linked. So, so linked means that, that the necklace bounds, bounds a disk in, in sort of the complement of some system of balls. So, so for example, you're, you have our manifold, and in universal cover you see this infinite collection of horror balls, and there might be sort of a, a necklace sitting there. So, so being unlinked from the necklace means that there's a disk which sort of avoids all the other balls. Well, then there's a condition called simple, which maybe I won't say what, what it is, but, um, but we have a theorem. Uh, Um, this is supposed to be a 50-minute talk, but I'm sorry. If, a few more minutes, if you don't. What? Oh. Okay. Well, I was told 50 minutes to give time for discussion, but um, anyway. So here's here's a theorem, which is uh, which is that uh, a a uh, less than or equal to nine length necklace is is unknotted and um, well mm, so and 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 two if uh well, a well less than or equal to seven length necklace is sort of unlinked, sort of in sort of an equivariant system of balls. Of course, there by itself is a six necklace that's linked, but if, if it's part of sort of a equivariant system, then uh, then your oh yeah thank you is unlinked and and three is is that uh, a non simple less than or equal to seven necklace so it gives rise to a less than or equal to six necklace. So I, I, I now can only say things in words. But the point is that if you have a parameter and which gives rise to one of our, our groups, our, our manifolds, the parameter lies on a variety. A variety is, is given by word in G, M, and N. And, and sort of a fact is that sort of the exponential exponent, the G exponent length of, of our, our W's is they're all at most seven. So, so a word is, is, is a relator in the fundamental group. 
And if you just track out what this relator does, if you look in the universal cover, a word of exp you know, exponent length k gives rise to a k necklace. And so, so in, in the universal cover, you, you, you see this, this k necklace. And, and or topologically, you know, just, just you, you, you see, even before the necklace, you know, here's, here's our cusp. So think of like here's this, this, this. Here's the, this. There's the cusp down here. Now there's the, the 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 cusp is tangent to itself at some spot. So so the point of tangency corresponds to a one handle. So so going a word in in one of these variety words corresponds to a word in M N and G where this is say the G. So. Um, so the word corresponds to some word well in this, this three manifold, which is the cusp together with this, this one handle. But viewed in the universal cover, this, this word uh, gives, gives rise to this, uh, to this necklace. And uh, necklace. And right. Now, if this necklace is unknotted, unlinked, and simple, that means there's a disk over here. The, this, this disk is, well, you could just assume that it's, in, it's disjoint from all its translates by uh, Dane's lemma, loop theorem. So, so this disk corresponds to, a, to an embedded disk in, in the compact manifold. So, so anyway, just to, to summarize, if you have this, this necklace and, uh, and it's sort of unlinked and, and simple, that gives rise to, to a disk. So said another way is, is that if you look at the manifold obtained, well, another, another way of saying that inside our, our original manifold is sort of the sub-manifold with a torus, a single one handle, and a two handle of valence sort of uh, k, where k is sort of the, this necklace number. So, so, so this thing's genus two. If you add a, a handle, two handle, it'll turn a g genus two surface into a genus one, or maybe two genus ones, depending on whether the boundary is separating or not. And so, and well, if you have a, a three manifold and a sub manifold, which sort of which is non-elementary and the boundary is a torus, typically this on the outside is is a solid is is a there's a torus and well tori bound solid tori unless they're knotted and in which case they could be dealt with. So so the upshot is is that just from all this topological stuff we can find embedded in our manifold a very simple type of compact object. It has a one handle single one handle and, and a single two handle attached to, attached to a torus. And, and, and let me mention this, this theorem of uh, uh, of Robert Haraway. Which is that uh, there are Exactly. Well, one when k equals four, three when k equals five, nine when k equals six, and fifteen when k equals seven. So these are, uh, well, to say the words, hyperbolic manifolds with a full necklace uh, less than or equal to seven structures. So, so the point is that all this topological business about knotting and unlinking and all that stuff says there's a particular type of manifold uh, sitting inside. Well, OK, you may have to do some operations to clean it up for whatever reason. But in the end, we find inside of so this, the summary is that if you start with a manifold of, vi of cusp volume of 2.62, inside that manifold, you could find one of 
well, one of these guys, uh, and, 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 and these guys have like two or three boundary components. Well, one of the boundary components is off facing our original cusp, and the other two are bounding solid tori to the outside. So, so, so therefore, our, our manifold has, has cusp line in most 2.62 is, is obtained by uh, filling one of these guys. Now, actually, if you might remember I said there's 22, and here there's 28. So, so it turns out that, uh, well, it turns out that, that only 9 of the 15 are sort of relevant. Relevant. In other words, we have these 85 varieties, and so we have a little bit more information. And so, it, so, so well, these 13 could potentially arise that, that only 9 of, of these 15 arise. So um, anyway, thank you for your attention. <laughs>